Hello! Today we will dive into digital discovery. Digital discovery is a tool and a method for exploring technology for business renewal. So what is this discovery all about? If we think about technology as a way to push uh, the productivity frontier across various business domains, then digital discovery is about finding those frontiers. And it's not only about finding the frontiers, but it's also about moving them and, and thus uh, gaining us uh, competitive advantage. But if we want to do that, uh, we need to invest in our capabilities and we need to prioritize those investments. And we don't need to and we don't want to do it all by ourselves, but we want to have uh, help from our business ecosystem. And for all that, we need to have a clear strategy. And so the loop closes. Digital discovery covers all those topics mentioned. Let's have a closer look. Digital discovery is a tool and a method for technology exploration for business renewal across all business domains and across all technologies. This is the digital discovery main view used for navigation. Starting from the top, there are 7 plus 1 technology verticals from business IT all the way to blockchain and beyond. Correspondingly, horizontals are about business perspective. The main split is to into three business domains, efficiency, customer value and customer experience. They are then split further. For example, customer value or value in short can be delivered as products, services, product systems, or complete solutions. In addition, digital discovery deals with companies' internal capabilities, the surrounding business ecosystem, and strategy, shown here at the bottom. However, the most interesting part is the intersection of verticals and horizontals. In other words, what happens when technology meets with business? For that, the tool has a push button in each intersection. As an example, let's have a look into Internet of Things starting with a quick intro. To get started, let's remind ourselves what Internet of Things is all about. For now, some key definitions and short descriptions are enough for our needs. In digital discovery, we can always come back should we need to align our thinking. Now, let's move on. So, our main interest is what happens in the business and technology intersection. Let's take one example from the Internet of Things technology vertical and look what IoT could do for our customer value, more specifically for our products and services. For that, I just need to click this button. It seems that we have found a bunch of blue and green boxes and a big two-sided arrow. Before diving into those details, let's seek for a bit of guidance. This guide is accessible from anywhere in digital discovery. Let's take some key points, starting from the blue box in the top left corner. In digital discovery, questions are in a central role. You can think them as business asking questions from technology. Sometimes it may be good to make it more personal, for example, business manager asking questions from subject matter expert, from somebody who knows IoT technology and solutions really well. With questions and answers, it is possible to build a strong bridge between business needs and technology enablers. Moving on to the green box. Cases are there to catalyst ideas and support discussion. Ideally, cases are used to cross-fertilize ideas and insight from one industry to another. Next, let's discuss competition and the related landscape. As you may recall, Digital Discovery Main Navigation View lists only the three business domains, efficiency, value and experience. However, it always boils down to competitive landscape. Why is this? Because if the competition is better in utilizing technology in any or all of those domains, it will eventually win. In addition, there's another universal in place here. 
whatever technology is doing in any business domain, it's always about competitive advantage, basic competitive requirement, or something in between. And a fundamental business evolution rule is that over time, all CAs become BCRs. Sometimes it may take years or even decades, but increasingly it's about months. So staying competitive is a constant race. How to participate that race must be the question for strategic management. A useful rule of thumb would be this. In order to maximize the competitive benefit, benefits from a technology investment, make copying it difficult by aiming at systemic and integrated solutions rather than off-the-shelf point solutions. With these observations, let's now return to IoT in product and service context. Here we have a bunch of examples of questions and cases. Some cases are also push buttons. There we have an option for deeper dive. Let's have a look on the questions here. It is easy to see that these questions are pretty basic IoT stuff, but finding good answers is not that easy. Gaining access to reliable, accurate, and even real-time product usage data is an exciting thought, but in the end, it's not about data. It's about what to do with it. And that's why it's worth going through some Q&A. In this industry, many players are already building IoT capabilities and deploying IoT solutions. Hence, it starts to be more about BCRs rather than sources for competitive advantage. However, often it is not necessary to know your competition and their solutions in detail. The main thing is to roughly know where the frontier is. More detailed competitive landscape analysis can be handled as a spin-off exercise. In the beginning, too much competitive paranoia only slows us down. Useful rule of thumb could be simply dividing questions and answers to two categories, those that are de facto BCRs in our industry and those with clear CA potential. This is already a very good starting point. Let's move on. If efficiency, value and experience represent the gain, then pain must be represented by capabilities. In other words, Capabilities are about investments needed to enable the multitude of good things that technologies bring us. Let's have a closer look. Here's a short summary of the capabilities needed to capitalize on IoT technology and solutions. Roughly speaking, the needed capabilities can be divided into four categories. Resources, human capital, processes and management. What exactly to do in each of them and how much to invest depends on targeted solutions and strategic choices we make. Looking at the left side of the main navigation view, you will notice that capabilities looks different. In fact, it is a push button by itself. There's a good reason for that. When it comes to strategic analysis, capabilities are not that different from what we just did with the Internet of Things in the products and services context. Let's have a very quick look. This looks very familiar. In fact, only the left side is different from the main navigation view. What is the meaning of this? Sometimes it can be beneficial to assess our capabilities in more detail. Typically, it would be for a single technology vertical. For example, we might want to know where exactly do we stand with regards to our analytics and AI maturity. This kind of assessment would give us an accurate and up-to-date reality check. That information could then be used as an input for strategy work and latest when it's time to implement strategic decisions and prioritize investments. We will need to come back to these topics in a later video. Next, let's talk about ecosystem. Simplifying a little, ecosystem is about complementing our internal capabilities. What we don't have, we can always buy or partner. In fact, that is a strategic decision in itself. But for now, let's settle for this general note on ecosystem. Ecosystem in each technology vertical is for later videos to dive deeper. 
However, we cannot leave without discussing strategy. What could strategy be about? Let's have a look. With strategy, we come back to questions. There are two reasons for that. First, strategy work is about questions. The key is to find the right questions. Digital discovery is there to help in finding them, be they about customer needs and value, competitive advantage, or investments in key capabilities. Second, this is the place where other tools need to take over to work on specific questions and strategy domains. In conclusion, if we have been able to find truly impactful strategy questions that are based on external and internal reality, and we have drawn insightful conclusions based on observations, then we must congratulate ourselves. Group hug won't hurt either. Summarizing today's findings. Technology evolution is fundamentally about productivity frontiers in three business domains. Operational efficiency, customer value and customer experience. Frontiers represent the best practices in each domain within an industry. But the frontiers are relative and moving. Relative because it's not about what we do, but about what happens in the competitive landscape. Moving because yesterday's competitive advantage is table stakes today. Digital discovery reveals in a very concrete way how each technology vertical cuts across business domains, pushing the frontier in each of them. But as said in the beginning, finding the frontiers is not enough. To stay relevant and not getting marginalized in the competitive landscape, it is important to place the bets correctly. For that, we need strategic insight and informed decisions. That's all for now. Here's a preview on future topics and candidates. Digital discovery brings us virtually bottomless well of new journeys and explorations. Let me know what you think. Thanks, and go Patriots!